Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And today we're taking a look at this flipper knife by Ultra X Cutlery. This is the Hugger. Uh, the Hugger is a unique knife in that you can get it in three different steel choices. You have five choices in uh, AUS 8 steel. Those are harder to find in stores. You've got one choice with 440C and that's a black coated blade. And then you've got two choices in D2, and the D2 choices are much easier to find. Um, this one's a stone wash. You can also get it with black G10 and a satin finish. Those are both available at White Mountain Knives, and that's where I got mine. And by the way, you can save 10% when you shop at White Mountain Knives when you use coupon code CCE at checkout. That's in uppercase letters. Now, some of the other options are available at other stores, but I happen to like White Mountain Knives the best. You get very good prices there. They ship to Canada, and every time they've shipped to me, it's gotten through and it's come to me no problem. And it has to do with the way they ship. They don't put that it's a knife store on the package. You know, it's a legitimate package, but they don't put that info in there. And Canada Customs, Canada Border Services Agency likes to stop packages that come from knife stores. So, if you want this, there's no guarantee that Canada Post won't stop it, but your odds are very, very high so that it will get through to you. This is a flipper knife, as you see. If you're interested in a nice big flipper, it's not really oversized, but it's a full-size flipper indeed. Stick around, the full review's coming to you right now. As usual, let's begin with a size comparison against the Ontario Wrap 1. And uh, that was the flipping open of it that you heard on the, the sound there. Line up the pivot points. Very much the same size as an Ontario Wrap 1. We've got a blade, a blade shape that is a clip point. You've got a little bit of a radius there, a negative radius, and there's a clip point. A swedge that goes all the way down that starts here at the top of the jimping and just comes all the way down. A saber grind, a very nice sharpness choil, totally adequate and well done. And a bit of a chamfer on the flipper tab. The uh, jimping is rather large and very comfortable for, on the hand, not a hot spot. It offers enough grip without being hot. And then the flipper tab turns into a bit of a guard there with that big first choil here. It's a knife that you can get a very secure grip on indeed, no matter how you choose to hold it. You know, a reverse grip leaves a fair bit of the knife over there. You know, this is a comfortable knife to hold, not so much in the reverse pull grip. Uh, it's just not all that comfortable this way, but most of the other grips are fairly comfortable. G10 on the handle scales. It's the widest point on the handle, this way, is along this line right here. And then it's going down to a thinner edge here and at the spine. And one thing that you could do to make this knife, actually I think it would improve it a fair bit, is to take the tiny bit of chamfering that they did here and take some sandpaper and sand that down all these edges on the back and on the belly of the knife here, on the belly of the handle. If that got sanded down, it would be much more comfortable in hand. It's not uncomfortable right now, but if you do get hot spots, it's generally along this belly edge right here, along here on your fingers, when you're gripping it tight to use it for an extended period, like for cutting a whole bunch of cardboard or whatever. Uh, most of the other grips you know, are not uncomfortable at all. So they could have done that at the factory, but it's a very small thing to take care of that at home. Uh, just make sure that you uh, use a mask because G10 fibers, uh, they're known to cause cancer. So you don't want to breathe in the dust from these knives. It's got three angles to it. There's a flat back and then angles to come down and then angles to come down again right there. It's sort of rounded at this point and you can see a distinct line on that point. And that sort of fits into the palm of the hand there. I gotta get some more light here, don't I? 
I don't know why I keep forgetting to turn this light on. That's much better. So yeah, this, it fits into the hand right there quite well, quite comfortable. Uh, if you don't hold it tight, you can put your finger in there, especially the, just the tip of your finger like this, because that uh, sharpness toil is actually quite generous. But be careful, you might nick your finger doing that. We've got a lanyard hole that's in a good spot, and it's certainly big enough for 550 paracord. We've got a pocket clip that is a good pocket clip in terms of how well it functions uh, going in and out of the pocket. How well it functions in terms of not creating hot spots in the hand. Uh, you've got a little, uh, you've got about an inch sticking out of the pocket when you're, you're holding it there. Let me measure this here. Yeah, it's very close to an inch. Let's take a look at that. So when you're trying to put the knife in your pocket, that spoon comes over the edge there and immediately slides right down to the bottom without any issue at all. So that's just under an inch, actually. Let me remeasure this here. There you go, yeah. You can see that it's, you know, just under the inch, seven eighths, roughly, about two centimeters sticking out of your pocket. And I'm finding that more and more people are commenting on my videos that they like this because it's much easier to grab You've got those two screws that are proud there, so it gives something for your thumb to grip onto to pull it back out of your pocket. I know that a lot of people like ultra deep carry, but equally, there's a lot of people that like you know this style of carry on a pocket clip. And that's why I'm glad that both are produced in abundance. And uh, you know, depending on what you prefer, buy the knife that fits your preferences, right? Stonewash here is very, very well done. It's, uh, just leave it at that. If you want satin, you can get that. If you want coated blade, you can get that. If you want black wash, there's one knife that you can get that. You can see they've got their own custom pivot screws, but it's very easy. You can just use a flat screwdriver. As long as you get one that's as wide as that X is long, like any one of the arms on that X, you can put that screwdriver in there and easily, you know, take this knife apart without damaging the screws. And it's just so easily done. That's a very good design feature right there. And the fact that their name is Ultra X Cutlery, um, you know, that X in there is a really cool thing. The rest of these screws are, D, are T6 screws, Torx in the number six size. We've got open pillar construction. And so we've got three of those uh, hourglass shaped uh, pins that are screwed together to hold the handle together. There is zero skeletonizing inside this knife, and that's why the weight is a little more than some people want. And since we're talking about weight, let's go through all of the different specs, and I'll do that while this is on the screen. The weight of the knife, 153 grams, 5.4 ounces. I don't mind that much weight for this size of a knife. It's just fine. But some people do mind, and so don't buy this knife. Buy something else that fits within the weight that you prefer. The factory edge sharpness. Ah, they did a good job on this knife. 110. That's the amount of grams of pressure it takes to cut through a piece of standardized monofilament on the equipment that it's designed to measure how sharp knives are. 200 and less is considered sharp. So when it's 110, they did a good job sharpening it. But uh, you can do a good job sharpening it at home, too. I like that there's a generous flat area on the spine of this knife, so you can clamp it on very well onto most systems. I like that. The length of the cutting edge, 8.96 centimeters, 3.53 inches. So yes, it's a big blade. The length of the blade tipped to the closest spot on the handle, 9.19 centimeters, 3.62 inches. The blade thickness, is 3.41 millimeters. That's 0.134 inches, so a little over an eighth of an inch. The blade depth, and I measure it about an inch down from the sharpener's toil, 2.71 centimeters, 1.07 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, a little thicker than I prefer, 0.62 millimeters. Uh, that's about 24 and a half thousandths of an inch thick. I would prefer it to be like 20 thousandths of an inch, around half a millimeter. It's not terrible, but it'll only get thicker every time you char uh, sharpen this knife. So that might be a con. 
Uh, since I've only measured one, I don't know if that's systemic or not, um, but uh, that's what you get. Uh, now for the grind angles. The grind angles are 18.8 .8 degrees, and on the opposite side, 22.6 degrees. Actually, this side is 18, where it says Ultra X. That side's lesser than that one, and again, it's that perennial issue of hand sharpening a knife and people sharpen differently when they go across this way than when they switch their hands and go this way. It's just your dominant hand is different than your other hand. Uh, now for the handle measurements, the handle length 12.04 centimeters, 4.74 inches. So four and three quarter and three and a half is basically what you got, a little over three and a half. The length of the grip area in here is around 10 centimeters, about four inches. That's sort of a sort of rounded off number because you can't be really precise exactly how much grip area you need. The thickness of the handle at the thickest spot, like I said, along here is 1.56 centimeters. That's 0.616 inches, but it's really not that bad because at the spine and at the belly, it is closer to 1.27 centimeters, almost exactly half an inch. So it is actually fairly comfortable on the hand, not too thick, unless your hands are small. The uh, handle depth, that's this measurement, it's biggest right about here, uh, 2.9 centimeters, 1.14 inches. When the knife is closed, the handle depth is biggest right about here, 3.77 centimeters, 1.48 inches. I don't count the flipper when I'm doing that. The total length of the knife from tip to tail, 21.2 centimeters, 8.35 inches. So eight and a third inches long. And that makes it a big knife. Like I said, I got mine from White Mountain Knives. They've got it for $34.99. They've got the D2 versions, both of them. That is the green and stonewash and the black and satin. So you get to do what on D2. You get to choose which one you want if you go to White Mountain Knives. Uh, there are other stores. You shouldn't have too much trouble finding these if you do a search. Uh, but since uh, White Mountain Knives gives me a deal on these knives, I'm only going to leave the links down there for White Mountain Knives. Unless you want to buy it from Amazon. Amazon prices are more than Ultra X as well. I do get a commission if you use the Amazon links. Just to give open, uh, you know, just to be very open and clear. Transparent, I guess is the word. If you buy the knives from White Mountain Knives, I don't get anything extra except for they do give me a discount when I buy knives to review. You can get 10% off at White Mountain Knives with coupon code CCE in capital letters. That means it's $31.49 after discount. So around that $30 mark, it's easy to find this knife. So just over $30 for a full-size folder, that's not bad at all. The lockup is very good. Actually, I'll do it this way because that's the way the close-up picture is. The lockup's good. And you've got lots of room for it to wear across over time. Uh, the access to the lock release, it could be a little more generous. It could have the lock bar arm uh, sticking out a little bit further so it's easy to grab, but it's not that hard to grab that thing to unlock the knife. When it's closed, the alignment is pretty much perfect. The flipper doesn't have any jimping on it, but because the detent is good, it's easy to flip that knife open just by pushing down or by using the light switch method. Now, sometimes if you slam it closed, it does bounce out. So that's something to be aware of. The uh, detent is pretty good. You know, if you do it slowly, it just sucks it right in there. Uh, demonstrating that isn't that big a deal. A lot of knives do that. Uh, let me see if I got the Ontario Rat here, if it does that too. There you go, it popped out too. So it's just the way it goes with knives. So good, it's got a good detent, good knife, good handle feel, except for a little hot on the edges. The pocket clip is nice. Um, I'll take it apart and just show you a still picture of the inside because there's no skeletonizing or anything to see and you can see the ball bearings. Steel ball bearings. 
What do you think of this knife? I like it quite a bit, especially at the price point, just a little over 30 US dollars. Uh, you get D2 steel, you know, and or you can get 440C or you can get AUS 8. Uh, on all of their listings for all three of those steels, they list it that the Rockwell hardness is around 58, give or take a little bit. Um, so not bad. I like it. Comfortable, big, uh, functional. It can be used for piercing. It can be used for slicing. Uh, you know, of course, you can do delicate work and you can do hard work with a lot of pressure because, you know, you get a good grip on it with this bigger handle. It's not everybody's knife, to be sure. There's a few things that some people might not like and a few things that some people will like, as I mentioned with the pocket clip. But functionally, everything works quite well, certainly within the tolerances for a, a knife this price. Even on the very end of the handle, they chamfered the edge there so that it's not, you know, sharp in the hand. I'm just going to start repeating myself if I keep talking. So I'm going to end that right, end this review right now. Thank you for watching. Please consider becoming a Patreon supporter if you like this channel. If my videos have been helpful and helped you make decisions on purchasing, thank you very much. I hope you have a great day. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum. Not your thumb.